Smithfield, North Carolina has a wonderful museum for its favorite daughter, Ava Gardner. She was one of the most beautiful and interesting and charismatic women of the silver screen. In the last couple of years, the museum commissioned this incredible mural of Ava Gardner on the side of the museum, and it just captures her many moods. I always immediately flock to the costumes when I go to a museum, and this gorgeous hand-sewn cape was worn by Ava for publicity photos for the Barefoot Contessa, and the two pairs of shoes there were also worn in the film. I'm a big fan of the film Mogambo, which she made with Clark Gable and Grace Kelly, and so this safari top was uh, fun to see, although it made they made her look quite busty uh, on the model here. She really wasn't that busty in real life. This gorgeous dress has an interesting story attached to it. Um, Howard Hughes was always after her and she was never interested in him, although she did stay friends with him <clears throat> even after she rejected him. And during the war when silk was very hard to find, Howard arranged uh, to get some silk for her and she had this beautiful dress made and designed um, by Howard Greer. This elaborate jacket and this beautiful uh, black gown were both designed by Irene for The Great Sinner, which she did with Gregory Peck. Because of the glare in the glass, it looks like um, she's wearing flip-flops under the dress. <laughs> Those are my flip-flops. Anyway, uh, look at this tiny waist on this dress as well. Amazing. Here's another beauty from The Great Sinner and then another small waisted period costume from Ride Vaquero. I particularly love this dress because it was originally worn in the 1938 film Marie Antoinette by Ruth Hussey. And Marie Antoinette's one of my favorite all-time films. Um, it was designed by Adrian and it was worn not in the film Pandora and the Flying Dutchman by Ava, but she wore it in a photograph um, for which she posed um, that was taken by Man Ray. And she loved the photograph and she eventually had it made into a painting, but it's an absolute beautiful gown with so much history. This pretty gown with the eyelet accents was worn in the film My Forbidden Past with Robert Mitchum. I love, love, love this headpiece, probably because I've seen so many pictures of her wearing it, but also because it's so unique and um, you have to have a pretty amazing face to wear something like this, and of course she did. Another piece that was really a thrill to see was this um, headpiece that was a favorite of Ava's. She wore it a couple of times, most notably in The Bluebird, in which she appeared with Elizabeth Taylor. And then there's this gorgeous costume sketch that was done by Edith Head to go with the uh, headpiece. If you're well acquainted with Ava Gardner, um, then you know that she had three husbands and they were all very famous in their own right. First was Mickey Rooney, the second was uh, clarinetist Artie Shaw, and the third of course was Frank Sinatra. Um, so I was anxious to see what kind of things she had pertaining to her husbands. Incidentally, I love what she wore to her wedding to Artie Shaw. A little mock turtleneck and I love her hair. She just looked absolutely stunning. But back to Frank, who was her true love, and we believe she was also his, even though they battled a lot, um, couldn't live with him, couldn't live without him. Um, there's this beautiful love letter that she wrote to him, a bona fide love letter, and then also um, a letter, a little note that he wrote to her. And then I love this one, which is a watch that she gave to him that has engraved on the back, to Frank and Desert Nights, which apparently pertains to the nights they spent together in Palm Springs. <laughs> you gotta love that. There are so many more things to see at the Ava Gardner Museum, but I'm going to give you just a little taste of some of my other favorites, and then you'll have to see the rest on your own. Because I'm a dog lover, I love this portrait she had of her corgi given to her by Frank Sinatra. And I love this yearbook declaring her one of the campus beauties, naturally. The glamorous purses and gloves and other accessories show that she was every inch a Hollywood star. But she was still a Southern girl at heart who still had her name and address on her keychain. I hope you get a chance to visit this fabulous museum. There's quite a bit of turnover in terms of exhibits and there's so much love that goes into it. 
Um, the people there are so devoted to Ava Gardner. I also took time to pay my last respects to Ava Gardner by visiting her grave at the cemetery. There are many discreet and tasteful signs that show you how to get to her grave, which I think is quite sweet. Um, the city remembers her um, with a lot of reverence. It's wonderful how she uh, kept her roots intact and still had such a love for her Southern heritage. If you love Ava Gardner, this museum is an absolute must. I hope you get a chance to go. Thanks so much for watching.